Hi, I'm Blue, your host and coach helping you create the life and business of your dreams. Welcome back to The Journey with Blue. I believe we get to have it all in this life, but it doesn't happen by chance. It happens by design. We are the true co-creators of our reality. And in my conversation with life and money expert and repeat guests on the show, Tanya Rapley, we break down how you can create a life on your own terms. Despite life circumstances, despite where you may currently be now, so that you can step into your power to create a life that you love. Tanya. I'm back. No, I'm you here. are back. <laughs> so soon, and I love that you're back <laughs> because I sent you the invite for this and you said yes, but you were like, didn't I already talk to you? Yeah, I was like, mm, I don't know if she meant to send this to me because <laughs> we just did an in-person event in Atlanta earlier yeah. this year. So it's different. We did the Journey with Blue and Live, and the Journey with Blue Live with like a full audience. Yes. Which was great. And that was around like your path, your journey to your first million mm -hmm. that you hit last year, which is still amazing. Girl, I needed it. Yes. I, it needed to happen. Yes, and this is different. So this is the show. We got our setup, we got our lights. But this conversation I think is so important because yes, you have the money, you got, you know, that like benchmark of success. But so many times we we go for that success thinking mm -hmm. that's the answer but it's truly the life that we want to create. Exactly. Right? And there's ways that we can create that without having to hit the 100,000, hit the million dollar mark. And I really want to break that down because for me, I mean, really not even long ago, like right before the pandemic, I was looking at my life mm -hmm. and I feel like I would have graded like every area of my life at F. Mm, wow. Truly, a F time, and that's and honest, and that's that really was, important. It was an honest moment that I had to look at my life and realize, like the things that I said that I wanted to be a reality, the things that I said I wanted to do, or who I was, mm -hmm. were not in alignment to my reality. Mm. And it was a hard moment. This was when I, when I was in New York mm -hmm. and didn't have the money. You know, like it was a lot of things going on and. For so long, I didn't know how to get out of it, mm -hmm. but I was like, I don't know what needs to change, but something has to change because I was like, this is not it. Mm -hmm. And I know so many people are in that place where they're like, what is going on? Like, mm -hmm. this is not working for me. And they don't, they may not know like that there's an out, Yeah. that there's something different, that there's something available to them more in alignment or in alignment to what it is they actually want to create for themselves. I see why you have me here. <laughs> and it all makes sense. No, it does, it does, because that's what I'm really passionate about. So outside of being a financial educator, which I've been since 2013, so mm -hmm. going on almost 10 years in the financial education space, I've really focused on helping people live and design a life they love. Like my whole movement, everything that I'm doing now is design your life and really be intentional about how you want to experience life. Because I think it's really important for us to be honest about how we are experiencing our current life mm -hmm. so that we can actually begin to, or be intentional about moving towards our ultimate life vision, yeah. which I believe is in alignment with our divine purpose or so the reason we were put here. But oftentimes where, you know, school breaks us down, our parents break us down, family breaks us down, society breaks us down, and breaks. when I say break us down, they like mold us to being what they think our lives mm -hmm. should look like instead of honoring who we were created to be yeah. or inquiry into who we are designed to be. And so I think that, you know, life design is about rediscovering. Mm -hmm. It's about finding yourself. It's not about having a midlife crisis. It's about mm -hmm. having like, uh, whatever quarter life awareness or whatever you want to call it yeah but um, I'm really passionate about it I, so and I love that because we have taken on so many other people's roles and ideals mm -hmm. for ourselves 
and even with social media, it's like we start to take on other people's lives as our own. Even with social media. Yeah. Even with social media. Mm -hmm. And I had this conversation with Tika. We had a conversation around emotional intelligence. My girl Tika Wilson? Yes. Oh, I, I love Tika. I meant to tell you I love anyways, Tico. but I meant to tell you that whole back She was here? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, but she is really amazing and she was talking about how people so many times are living a life that's not even attached to what they truly desire mm -hmm. and somewhere along this process along this journey we get lost yeah and um, last week or two weeks ago I was in one of Maya's programs we did a workshop and she brought up like values mm -hmm. you know like what are the values that you actually like hold true that are your, a priority for you and that was so key because it's not just like oh like yes I want to have a great fitness life or mm -hmm. great like whatever like the generic pie of how we break our life down but it was like well what actually like drives you what Absolutely. motivates you what do you want to create and I realized like when I was like in college trying to figure out what I wanted to do I said I wanted three things and I like said it's my three C's and I didn't know it was my values at the time but I said I wanted to be able to create mm -hmm. control and contribute mm, I like that and that's how I wanted to live my life I wanted to be able to create whatever it is that felt authentic to me whether mm -hmm. it was in my business or in my home life I wanted to be in control of my time mm -hmm. and how I created things um, how much money I made, how much money I didn't make, and contribute, whether that was on bigger scales, like, you know, my show and mm -hmm. coaching, to like, what does my contribution look like for my family? Mm -hmm. What does my contribution look like in my home or my community? And so those were my values. And I wonder, like, how can other people kind of like even start there and mm -hmm. discover like, okay, well, what what you know makes sense for me yeah i mean so it's funny that you say that because one of the pivotal moments for me was when i started therapy we did a core value exercise because up until that point i didn't know what my core so values what, oh, a core, core value so we okay. did a core value exercise and up until that point i wasn't aware of what my core values were mm -hmm. um and that i feel like that really kicked off me doing my work but my core values are joy, personal growth, freedom, and relationships. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at everything that led to that, you know, freedom, my health is important to me, but that gives me physical freedom, right. being healthy. Money is important to me, but that mm -hmm. gives me freedom to decide and wake up and say, you know what? I want to go to LA this weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to LA, you know, and having that time freedom and personal growth, which is just always growing, relationships, um, which is connection, community those in my life my family my friends mm -hmm. my my business community the audience that i serve and joy like right. joy has to be at the center of it and whenever i feel off kilter i always go back mm -hmm. to that and so the exercise that my therapist had me do and it's actually exercise now that i do in my design your life curriculum it's an exercise that i do in my 30-day shift program is we go through a, a whole list of core values or values and then we narrow it down and we mm -hmm. keep narrowing and we keep narrowing and we look for the similarities and we yes. narrow it down until you have your four um and they're going to change i think that's what's important to understand too mm -hmm. that as your life changes your values change yeah. and your values should change as your life changes what i valued at 26 years old living in new york city is very different than what i value at 38 years old being mm -hmm. a mother in atlanta georgia yeah very different mm -hmm. um to an extent right because mm -hmm. i think that joy is it's also how it shows up because yeah. joy was has always been important to me but what gave me joy at 26 does is not the same thing that necessarily gives me joy right now mm -hmm. um so i think it is like you can go online and get a core values list, yeah. really walk through it and narrow it down and keep asking yourself questions. I strongly believe that when you get good at asking yourself the right questions, you begin to facilitate your own breakthroughs. Mm. What are some of those questions? Um, some of the questions are like, I think how you graded your life. Yeah. Like graded all the areas like, of your this life. This is bad. Like, yeah. And it was hard to say that. Right. And it was hard to have like that, that moment, that mm -hmm. revelation. But I had to be real with me, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure other people were looking like this is not great, but I had to like be real with blue because yeah. this is my reality. I had to like face myself in the mirror because if you're not real with yourself, you know what I mean? Like you're not going to receive other people being real with you mm -hmm. because you're kind of living in a fog, you're in a, you're living a facade. Um, but I think that 
the question should be, so uh, I love, I went to a conference and Tony Robbins said, the quality of your life depends on the quality of the questions you ask. Mm. And that question is, you know, uh, what am I satisfied with in my life right now? What would I like to change? What do I have control over? And what is out of my control? Mm. What habits do I need to take on in order to move closer to my ultimate life vision? And what can I do now? I think those are important questions. Like, what can I do today to take action? Right. Um, and asking yourself that maybe every day when you wake up, okay, what can I do to take action? What can I do to take action? What can I do to take mm -hmm. action? Because we always think that action is like has to be this big thing. Yeah, like, oh, so I quit big. my job yeah. or I relocated. And sometimes action is just writing out a to-do list. Yeah. Sometimes action is returning a phone call. Sometimes action is getting outside and grounding for a couple of minutes or meditating. Sometimes action is making a phone call to someone who you need to make amends with. Um, sometimes action is something that's self-care related, like yeah. going and getting your nails done <laughs> or um, scheduling that massage that you said you would do for yourself or, you know, so. I love that yeah. because we have to break it down because mm -hmm. like, I think anything where we're like our life, it seems like this big daunting, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, untackable that's not a word i don't know but like this but it's overwhelming feat. yes yeah. this is huge feat and it's like no just break it down like you mm -hmm. said what is it that you can do now what is it in your control what are those small actions mm -hmm. that you do have control over because there's so much that you don't have control over exactly so like you said do the audit of what can i do now and, and that's it, yeah yeah make it real and for me like I said, I didn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I just knew something had to change. I just said, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I think because I had started to open myself, then things started coming to me and I got involved in a lot of like personal development trainings and like doing a lot of transformation work, which helped freed me. Mm -hmm. But then it also like was like gratitude, like my morning gratitude. And I leaned heavily on this during the pandemic because the world was shut down. Yes, and like, what are we gonna do? Like, what are we gonna do? And there's nothing that we could do. It's not like we could open things back up. It's not like I could make contracts come back and, you know, things change. But I also had to realize like, yes, this is not my most ideal, but I am so blessed. And I had to like, just make sure I reminded myself of that mm -hmm. on a daily basis to shift my energy. Absolutely. Because I was constantly in of like a space of like, I don't want to be in Atlanta. I'm, you know, I was living my life in New York or like I just had these opportunities and that just got canceled on me when I was like in my groove and I had just moved. I had so many things that I felt like were going wrong mm. that I needed to shift to what was going right. Yes. I think that is an important realization because it's very easy to get on like the momentum of the negative, right? Mm -hmm. But you want to get on the moment, momentum of the positive. You want to like shift focus and bring back momentum to the positive because things are going to happen in life. Like yeah. that that's life and we're here to experience the good and the the bad. I don't even want to call it bad, but you know, we, it's just it is what it, it is. It is what it is and I think like, you know, we all have work at any given time and each season demands different work from us. Mm -hmm. And like my work right now is being focused on the present. I think as an entrepreneur, as a planner, as a mother, I've been so focused on the future. What are we going to do then? What are we going to mm -hmm. do then? What are we going to do then? What are we going to do then? It's like Tanya you are robbing yourself of the present yeah. by not focusing on what you have going on right now. Like, even as an entrepreneur, you know, even sometimes like invoices might be slow and you're like, oh, when's it coming? But it's like, mm -hmm. you have what you need right now, but you, you can't accept or rejoice in what you have, what you need right now, because you're worried about when this next thing is coming mm -hmm. instead of understanding that you have enough right now. So it is absolutely an ongoing thing is like gratitude and being present being yeah. in the moment and i know that people are just like how do i plan yeah. and be in the present at the same time you make your plans you say this is what i want to do you set that intention mm -hmm. and with that being the intention you can focus on the now knowing that my intention is to experience that outcome right. and so subconsciously you are going to move towards your intended outcome mm -hmm. you'll wake up and be like oh here we are yeah here we are Okay, but what about when you feel like for people who are like, well, I've planned and things didn't turn out the way that I had planned them, right? Mm. Cause, but it's like you make your plans and then life happens, you know, like life happens. It does. So, so I think there's two things, right? Mm -hmm. The first thing is like, was that thing supposed to happen? 
sometimes we make plans and we want things to happen that weren't supposed to happen in our path. And we have to ask ourselves, what happened as a result of that not happening? What did I, what opened up for me or what closed that needed to close as a result of what I wanted to happen not happening? Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, did you do everything you needed to do to make it happen? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes when I feel like, oh, that didn't go as planned, I really have to ask myself, did you do everything yeah. you needed to do? Did you check off every single item on the checklist related to that? Mm -hmm. Like, did you go 100%? Sometimes we go 80% and are upset when we don't get a, the outcome that 100% would have given us. But right. it's like, you didn't go 100%, mm -hmm. so why should you get that outcome? That's good. It wasn't the project, it was your, like, your action. Yeah, and I think you know, having that personal responsibility is super important and super key in this whole process. Because even in my F, I got myself to that F. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and I knew it was up to me to make those actions to get it to where I actually exactly. wanted it to be. And I think there's, there's power in taking personal responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, if you're the reason it didn't happen, you know, you could be the reason that it does happen. Right versus it's outside of your control like for me something outside of my control is that's concerning for me mm -hmm. but if i know i was the reason it didn't happen so okay you sabotage it yourself go fix it okay do you think is it that easy i mean it's for me it's gotten to that point where it is mm -hmm. but i've been working on myself for quite some time now what about the times when it wasn't that easy for you when it wasn't that easy for me, then I asked myself why it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. Like I asked myself, is it because something I really don't want to do and it's out of alignment with me? Is it out of alignment with what I'm supposed to be doing? And usually I'll ask for guidance. I'll ask mm -hmm. for guidance and be like, okay, then reveal to me what should occur. Right. Because I want this thing to happen with ease and it's not happening with ease. Is there a lesson for me to learn in this? Do I need to ground down and focus on the lesson? Or do I need to be honest with myself about my true intentions related to this? Mm -hmm. And if it's really actually in alignment. Mm -hmm. um, but I also know that everything isn't going to be easy. Yeah. Um, and part of the path is like determining, is it not easy because there's a lesson for you to learn in that initiation? Mm -hmm. Or is it not easy because you're pushing for something that is not supposed to occur for you? Mm -hmm. And I can't give anybody that answer. That's like right. time reveals that to you. That's something you have to sit back and get still on mm -hmm. and really reflect on and ask for signs. But I promise you, you ask for them signs, yeah. you're going to get them in all types of ways. And I like that. And I do think when things are meant for you, it does come and it does unravel like in its due time, mm -hmm. the way it's supposed to. And for me, when I talk about now in this process of de designing my life, it, it may be a little bit easier for me because mm -hmm. it's just blue. Like whatever mistake or thing that I get right is just me. Mm -hmm. I don't have anyone depending on me, any responsibilities. I'm not gonna be the only one homeless, and you know, on the mm -hmm. in my car. You I won't be on the street. House if you need I'm to. Right. But you know, I I realize like I can move a lot differently than most people because I also, you know, I just have a, a freer kind of space. But what about women who have like kids and yeah. for a husband or just bills and yes. you know so it's like they're like oh, okay design this life that sounds great in theories but i got kids to feed i gotta do this 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 in my day for to make sure they're taken care of like blue like that's just not my reality i can't move like that that's the responsibility of motherhood you know like i think people take motherhood Okay, so I, I love social media, but I think that like social media has also romanticized motherhood. Mm -hmm. You know, like people have these cute reels and everything and great, granted, like it's the most amazing thing I've ever done. Like my son is one of my greatest accomplishments, but in the same sense, it is absolutely life altering. Mm -hmm. And you have, I, I'm glad that I have my son the way I have my son. Like I waited until I was established in my career. Granted, I don't necessarily have time to have more kids mm -hmm. and it's like, it, it's me and him. Um, but I think that you do like you do have to prepare for it because yeah. it is a life shift and there are advantages that you have in not having children. There are things your time is freer, you don't even your emotional freedom that you have in not being a parent. Like my son permanently occupies 
a place in my mm-hmm. heart in my mind right. like i You're constantly thinking about constantly, where's Paris, how's he constantly yeah. yesterday his school sent out an alert that like an almost four-year-old with a history of seizures and my son had his first seizures in april mm-hmm. um, with a history of seizures was being tended to by the ambulance like i stopped everything that mm-hmm. i was doing and like ran up to his school and it wasn't him thank goodness but it's just like when you don't have kids, you don't worry about things like that. Don't interrupt your day. I've, I've had to can when he first had his seizures, I had speaking engagements that I had to cancel and couldn't travel for. I was on the way out to a documentary mm-hmm. screening, like recording when he had his first one. And so it's like your day become your priority. Mm-hmm. And for anyone who doesn't have kids, enjoy <laughs> not having anything else be your priority, but you, right? Because, um, there's a lot of responsibility that comes to parenting. And, you know, we kind of talked about, how some people are broken down um, from their divine path or purpose or molded away from it Mm -hmm. because of how they were parented. And so we have to think about that as parents who are aware of this. How do I parent in a way that inspires them and encourages them to be who they are? And that's work. Mm -hmm. Like that gentle parenting, like I'm gonna let you be who you are. (laughs) Like I'm encouraging freedom. It's work. Yeah, It's work and it's against what we were raised. So you're kind of like, what do you like? I'm reparenting myself on a regular basis. Mm. What did you say? <laughs> what? Say so it having to check it. Bring it back. I know. <laughs> I really am. It's like Tanya. Remember, remember. Mm-hmm. But you're in such a good position. Like yeah. you're in such a. In anybody. I mean, even as a mom, though, I'm still in a great position. Yes, sure. um, but I think that you're in such a good position, and like just embrace mm-hmm. being full of yourself. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm really thankful for this. And even as we think about the things that are in our control and things that out of, that are out of our control, the, the reality is 80% of the things are going to be out of our control, mm-hmm. whether it's in our households in life in the world. And, you know, when the pandemic happened, one of my friends, um, I saw her like some months, like with it into the pandemic. And she was like, Michelle, she was like, it's like the pandemic didn't even happen to you. Like, (laughs) you've been like, you know, traveling, you've been having like all these opportunities. I've hosted other shows and I'm like, the pandemic definitely happened to me. But I think when it was like all hitting, I told the pandemic how it was going to happen. Yes. Yes. And I think that is so much power in that. Mm-hmm. And power that I don't think I knew I had before, mm-hmm. but it's a power that we all have. Yes, yes. Even when we think about the recession, that's you know that's looming. It's like okay, well that's their mm-hmm. truth. This is gonna be mine, mm-hmm. you know. And that was the same thing when the pandemic happened. I was like, okay, I had to turn the TV off. I, I, I remove Apple news stories, like the alerts and everything. Like I stopped tuning into because like I don't want them to cloud my experience that I am focused on having during this. And it really, like you said, a lot of stuff is out of our control, but control what you can control. Mm -hmm. Control what you can control. Right. So as we're thinking about like having the awareness of self, right? And going through your values of what is truly important to you. So Mm -hmm. doing that inventory, asking those real questions. Mm -hmm. um, What else did we say? Um, It is asking a real question, taking action. Taking action, Taking the action. small action. Yes, being right. present. We said gratitude was a small action. What are some other journaling? Journaling, you're writing out your to-do list, mm-hmm. um, like and literally just doing a task, doing something that you might have been procrastinating on, or something that you know will take like what you need to do to the next level. Reaching out to someone and having a conversation. Yeah. Sometimes it's taking action, asking for help, mm-hmm. is an action. Understanding, okay, I cannot do this alone. Yeah. I need this person. I need this type of person to help me. I need this support. Uh, I mean, that's been huge in the season I am with yeah. finishing my investment property that I ended up converting All the to an Airbnb. You have going on. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually in a season of simplification though. Mm, okay. I'm simplifying a lot, um, and so I'm really happy about that for myself mm-hmm. because the audit, right? Yeah. And so last year was my most successful year in business. And I told myself like, oh, I have to have this person. I have to do this and I have to do that. And I was like really staffing up. And in my season of simplification now, it's like, this is overwhelming me. Like Mm -hmm. this, I don't enjoy having these obligations related to like make this big payroll and everything else. I didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to simplify my life Mm -hmm. so that I can enjoy it and have what I need. And there's so many things that I enjoy about my life. And now I, I, I got to a point where I felt like I was in pursuit of other people's goals instead of really saying like, these are the things you prayed for. Yeah. 
this is a lifestyle you pray for. Like you pray to be able to have an in-home nanny and have the flexibility to go where you choose and take your son with you and, you know, travel for work and say yes and no to things that didn't serve you. Mm -hmm. You're comfortable. You drive the car you want. I mean, granted, you know, I would drive a Lambo truck if someone gave me one. <laughs> but I'll take it. Like and I love my, with it. I'll you know, I love it. my Tesla. Like that was my dream car like five years ago, and mm -hmm. I, I have so many of the things I said I wanted. I love my home. So many things I said I wanted. Yeah. And so for me, it was let's simplify because what are you in pursuit of? Mm -hmm. Instead of just like really enjoying where you are right now. And I love that because it's a constant checking in, mm -hmm. right? And that constant. Yeah. And realizing that what you wanted before sometimes changes mm -hmm. and that's okay mm -hmm. and like you said you how you felt mm -hmm. i think that's something that's really key like you felt like okay this may like i'm great some of these things are a little overwhelming let me kind of like streamline like you said simplify some things mm -hmm. and you know for people and this is a, a story for me and around like the feeling of it so a couple months ago i went on a trip to peru mm -hmm. and great trip went with some girlfriends and um we decided to climb rainbow mountain Ooh. which is like so if you're thinking like we're like oh stone mountain something like easy little hike not Stone Mountain, Rainbow Mountain, one of the highest like peaks in the world. Type oh of situation. no! Like, this, is, this is the situation, okay? Uh -huh. And so we had to like ride horseback halfway there, and then we had to go up the elevation. Our tour guide had like oxygen tanks with the. <laughs> At what point did you be, did you no, feel like? I, oh. No, I love stuff like this. Oh my I'm god, always game. Michelle! I'm game. It's freezing cold with each step like I'm like losing breath like thinking I'm about to die is about to take me out but we got to the top had this great moment like you know the fact that we even made it to the mm -hmm. top that we kept going because I think at every point we all wanted to give up without any back. conditioning y'all did this oh no conditioning we are so not we're not ready we're not prepared <laughs> mentally physically yeah. we're not there and I'm coming back down the mountain on the horseback and it was just like this beautiful scenery like horseback looking at the mountains and in that moment and I didn't realize this before in that moment I was like wow like this is what I dreamed of. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I had hit these, you know, dollar amounts or that like I had all this money or like crazy success in my business. I was like, but this is what I wanted it to feel like. Yeah. And it was like with my friends, like we were there for, you know, some time. I only had to work maybe like two or three hours, like, and I was coaching, you know, someone and supporting them, like something that I absolutely love to do. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at life and I was like, wow, I was, I thought I was chasing the money. I thought I was chasing this like success, this title, but I really was chasing a feeling. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and you know what's important about that is because I often tell people like get into the vibration of your joy mm -hmm. and I'll tell them reflect on a moment or experience that you had where you felt joy like absolute joy that's one of your moments yeah. that whenever you feel like things aren't going the way you planned or you feel disconnected from it just close your eyes and envision and feel that mm -hmm. because there was a vibration of that experience that the brain is not smart enough to determine like, oh, we're not really there. If you really focus on envisioning and placing yourself back there, the brain is just like, oh, we there. Mm -hmm. We feel all the feelings of being there. And that's one of my favorite activities to do with people and to do with myself. Yes. It's like when I feel like things aren't going my way or I feel like I'm having a hard time tapping into gratitude, I place myself in the vibration of joy and like moments like that. Mm -hmm. And my goal, I would love, so around the work that I do is helping powerful women become even more powerful, but it is for them to experience more moments like that. I can be driving down Camp Creek Parkway, listening to Chris Brown, my windows down. <laughs> and I'll be like, this a is a moment. That's like, a moment. life is good. I'm singing yes. at the top of my lungs. The weather feels good. Like, this is a moment. Take me back to high school. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, I want more people to have moments like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. It's funny how travel does that, too. Yes. I definitely but, had moments like that when I was in the Amalfi Coast this summer. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, Amalfi Coast. I was just looking over and I was like, oh, okay. We this love is a the feeling. black girl luxury. This is a feeling. And I think that's so important also because, like you said, it can be the smallest things mm -hmm. and that we can cherish. Like I said, like now being home, like the time that I've been able to spend with my family, mm -hmm. Auntie Michelle is my favorite thing, you know, like. 
those things like have brought me so much joy and have been a part of my values mm -hmm. of what I get to create, what I get to control, and that I get to contribute in this life. And I think that's so important. And I think that's something that all of us can start showing up powerfully to really design these lives I love it. and to step into it as beautifully, as powerfully, in the infinite possibilities that's truly available to us. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. It's, um, yeah, um, I think that there's a lot of times we feel like we did everything right, right? Especially those of us who went to college, got good grades, did all the things we were supposed to do, and then we're still not enjoying our life. And mm -hmm. that is, for you, that is your alert. Like, that's your internal alert or alarm system saying, okay, we need to really focus on coming back to the essence of who you are. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes that requires a coach. Sometimes that requires a book. Yeah. Sometimes that requires some questions. Sometimes, whatever it is, you can start with a book. I love books by Ayala mm -hmm. Van Zandt. Okay, like, I never read her book. Ooh, really? Like, I hadn't either until mm -hmm. I went through my divorce. And I was like, this lady can write a book. Mm -hmm. Ayala can write the hell out of a book. Okay. I would honestly suggest, like, starting with one of her books and mm -hmm. just starting to, like, kind of process. One of them, um, it's like a 40-day, um, it's a book that's like 40 days. Each day you have something. Okay. I love that book. I forgot the name of it. But there's also one, like, Black Women Who Were in the Valley. Mm -hmm which is a beautiful one. Mm -hmm. It's so much, so, she's good. Okay. Start with a book if you can afford or you don't even know what coach you would want to work with. Start right. with a book. Start with a book. For me, I didn't have the money when I was in New York. Somehow, I don't know where it came from. But like I said, I got involved in a lot of different, well, it's not a lot, but it started with one and then it trickled into a lot more. Mm -hmm. But personal development programs, mm -hmm. that was huge like for me. Like Landmark, um, like Momentum, which is in New York and in um, D.C. Mm -hmm. So, so many. And then a coach as well, mm -hmm. you know, that helped, that can help you and support you. But you can sit with yourself and do these life audits and ask these questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, don't you have like a, a workbook to support women as well? So I have my Design Your Life workbook. I have my class, Clarity Without a Coach. That's mm -hmm. um, available on my, like, through my outlet. So Clarity Without a Coach. Um, my Design Your Life workshop is a great intensive. Mm -hmm. We do it annually in March of every year mm -hmm. for people who just want to get be surrounded by community. The 30 day shift is a program that I do. Um, and we just started, we just did our three day challenge, the show up for yourself challenge, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be offering that again, and that's gonna become like yes. a signature program for me. Yes, and tune into shows like this. And this, you know, podcasts mm -hmm. are so powerful too. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was late to the podcast wagon, like as far as listening to yeah. them. Mm -hmm. I was like, so I'm just listening to people talk? Like, yes. But they're so good. They're so good. Another thing I've been working on for me is my attachment style, mm -hmm. like my um, love. And, you know, I'm going through a divorce, dating. Mm -hmm. um, and in and, and dating, one of the things I realized that I want to work on my attachment style. Mm -hmm. So I've been really listening to good podcasts on attachment styles. It's like that. healing healing any childhood wounds that you have that affect how you attach in relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think we're always a work in progress and mm -hmm. process. You know, that's the whip, mm -hmm. that's the financial terms. We're always a work in process. And so give yourself that grace in this journey of where you are, embody who it is and where you ultimately want to be mm -hmm. and do the things that are in your control each and every day mm -hmm. that will help shift your reality yes. and that is the key to designing your life so. that's the, that's the key like i'm gonna have you speak at the yes. next one thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you tanya i appreciate You're you so, mm, oh, this is great this is we, we always talk oh good, we do we have good talk we do yeah we do and then um the million dollar conversation the one from january I'm, i mean from february i'm excited to post that because that was really good too yeah there's mm -hmm. so many lessons that were learned last year and so many things that this year I'm like I understand why last year happened the way it did mm -hmm. like especially going into this year becoming a single mother um, just like a change in my focus and just really needing to get still and simplify like that really gave me the space and the money yeah. that I needed to just do and yeah. be mm -hmm. it gave me the money to be yeah and I think that's one of the things I've also learned like about financial freedom and why financial freedom is so important and financial security is so important because in the hard times of your life, it can give you the space to just be mm -hmm. and figure out what next steps make yes. the most sense for you. And even create mm -hmm. the way you ultimately want to create from a free space. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm so thankful. I've never been able to speak like this and give like this. and But it's because I'm in a better place. Mm -hmm. 
And so, yeah, you have to give that to yourself. Yeah. So this is great. Mwah, I love it. I hope you enjoyed this conversation and took some notes. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share with a friend. But the conversation is just the beginning. If you're ready to take action to step into your purpose and create a life and business of your dreams, I'm ready to support you along the journey. Head over to thejourneywithblue.com to learn how you can apply to work with me to create results that you're proud of. I'll see you next time on The Journey with Blue.